The flat earth theory dates back all the way to the early centuries. The theory of a flat earth is that the earth is shaped like a disc or plate instead of a globe. The idea of the flat earth has been around for ages. In the mid to late 1800s, there was a man named Alfred Wallace who was a surveyor, and he wanted to prove otherwise. Alfred Wallace read in a book called Zetetic Astronomy that if anyone can prove the world was round, they would be given 500 pounds, which is a lot back in the 19th century. I'll come back to Alfred Wallace, but first about this announcement. This announcement was published in a book called Zetetic Astronomy, which was published by someone going by the name of Parallax. This person's name was Samuel Burley Robotham. Robotham came up with what is known as the Bedford Level Experiment. So this guy was an English inventor, and of course, as most inventors are, they like to figure stuff out. So Robotham came up with the Bedford Level Experiment. The Bedford Level Experiment was based on the Bedford River. So this river had a drainage canal, which was about 10 kilometers long. This is where Robotham would do his experiment. It was marked with two bridges, here and here. Robotham would be on one of the bridges here, this can be Robotham, and his friend would be down the river here in his little sailboat thing. So Robotham would be holding a telescope, trying to see his friend 10 kilometers away. The theory was if the world was round, you would not be able to see the boat. The idea was that Robotham would not be able to see the sail when it gets all the way to the end because the sail would be four meters under his view level. But the problem was after his friend traveled down the canal, Robotham could still see him. This made him realize that the earth is not round, but it is flat. All of his results are recorded in his book, Zetetic Astronomy, Earth Not a Globe. He also published all these findings under this name of Parallax. Now back to this Alfred Wallace guy. He did another experiment on this same river. He would place discs here, here, and here. So Alfred Wallace, he would stand on one of the bridges. He can be on the same bridge as this Robotham guy. If he was right, towards the middle of the canal, the disc would be slightly higher and the rest of them would look slightly lower. This was because of the curvature of the earth. So the whole thing was set up by him, Robotham, and their agreed upon referee. The disc that was placed in the middle was slightly higher and the disc that was furthest away was slightly lower. This is what was observed. There was a, another man named John Hampton who had a telescope and he was watching what Wallace was doing. He observed that the discs that were placed up by Wallace were all in line with each other. He saw this because they were all in line with the crosshairs on the lens of the telescope. Now, these are just two of the earlier experiments that people took to look at the flat Earth. Now, we will move on to what most of us know today. What we know today is that the Earth is a globe or a sphere. This is how we see it, sort of looking like this. The first recorded thoughts of the world being a sphere was in ancient Greek times, where they would experiment by comparing the shadows of sticks in different locations. So what this experiment was, was that when the sun was directly overhead in one place, the stick in that place had no shadow, like this. So the sun over the top, stick here, no shadow. Then there would be another stick over here. At the same time in the city, about 800 kilometers north, the stick there did have a shadow. The idea of this experiment is if the world was flat, the shadows would be exactly the same at the same time because they would be positioned at the same angle towards the sun. More proof that we have comes from about 350 BCE from Aristotle, who observed the moon during an eclipse, where the Earth would make a round shadow on it. He also saw that the stars in the night sky were different depending on where he was in the world, so it would be different in both the northern and southern hemispheres. This is because of the direction the Earth is facing. Now, even more proof that the world is not flat is now that we have the development of satellites in space. The first satellite was created by Sergei Korolev and was launched into space on the 4th of October 1957 by the Soviet Union. This satellite was called Sputnik 1, and this initiated the Soviet Sputnik program. Sputnik 1 was used just for auditing the Earth and observing what the Earth looks like. This was the first man-made object sent into space. Today, many satellites have been sent into space to observe the Earth and other planets. Since the Sputnik 1 satellite has been launched, there have been about 6,600 other satellites launched in 40 different countries. There was an estimate back in 2013 that 3,600 of these satellites are still in orbit. And out of all of these satellites, about 1,000 were still operational while the rest have lived out their useful lives and become space debris. All these satellites have different purposes. They are for observing the Earth and other planets, navigation, communication, and also for weather observations. In the satellites that observe the Earth, they normally have cameras on them. These take photos of the Earth and show us what Earth looks like from space. Normally photos that are seen taken from satellites are images of the whole planet, like this picture, but because of the size of our planet, this is not what we would see from the satellites. We would only see a small section like this photo here. These sorts of photos show the curvature of the Earth. At the moment, this is our biggest proof that the world is round and not flat. 
Now, the problem we still have today is that we still don't know whether the Earth is truly flat or if it's round. You can decide what you think. Just remember, if you think the Earth is flat, people will think you are crazy. Thank you.